Hey, it's Gray McKenzie here from Zenpilot. I want to take a couple minutes and walk you through what a good agency account dashboard looks like, or you can think of this as an agency client health tracker. Maybe that's the right place to start is just by defining it. Um, but before we do, this single tool, whether it's built here, like I have it in ClickUp, or it's built in your project management tool, Monday, teamwork.com, Notion, uh, whatever the platform is, or inside Google Sheets or Excel or wherever this lives, um, has saved teams a whole bunch of time in efficiently getting to where are the client issues that we need to go work through and solve and visibility into how our team is performing. So the account dashboard, let's just try and define it. I just gave you a couple of those bullets. What we're looking for is the place where we can efficiently centralize the key info about your client accounts. We want to make sure you're keeping the promises that you've made to your clients. You're spotting any issues before they blow up into client fires. You're doing a good job of supporting your team. You're correctly distributing work. I could go on and on with what those things look like, but that's the idea behind the account dashboard. At first glance, I think you might think, hey, I already have a CRM, I've got HubSpot, I've got Pipedrive, I've got Salesforce, I've got whatever, why, don't, why doesn't this all just live there? What I'd say is for most teams, their growth team certainly lives out of the CRM, but on the delivery side, they're living out of your project management tool. And so going back to our principle of make the process live where the work gets done, I wanna make sure that this is built natively right into your project management system your delivery team is in it in the day to day. And this should be a, a two way stream of information. So let's just talk a little bit about what's here. There's a whole bunch of information. We could go crazy with this. This version's uh, relatively simple and still even has things you could ignore for now, but what's the name of the client? Where are they in your client journey? Are they onboarding right now? Are they in an active project or retainer? Are they offboarding? Are they inactive? What's the health? This is a very simplified traffic light system, red, yellow, green. Um, skip over NPS, what services are they receiving? What's their goal? And who's ultimately responsible for this? Who's the delivery lead on the account? If we expanded this one out, you'd see this is uh, called delivery lead here. In this case, I'll leave that, leave that out for the time being. You can go crazier. You can throw in, you know, what's the billing and we can tie billing into this and invoicing. We could tie in start date and end date. And how long has this person been a client? This gets really important when we start calculating churn rates or retention rates. Uh, we normally want to throw revenue numbers in here as well. It's probably in this one, but maybe not shown in this view right now. And then we've got due date and comments, which I'll get to in a second. But really, the, the core pieces of information you need are what's the client's name? Where are they in their life cycle with you? What's the health of that account? What services do they receive? Uh, what's their goal? And then who's responsible for it? If I had to boil it down to just six things that you absolutely should have, and if you don't have it, go build it right now. Um, that should be there. Now, there's a couple other things I'd like to see. I want to see when somebody leaves, why. We'll talk about that maybe here in a second. But um, let's just start with those things. So this is in here. What the heck do we do with it if we build it out? Any major account changes, this should be bi-directional. So your account managers, project manager, strategist, whatever you call that role, we'll call it account manager for the sake of this video. Whoever that, you know, think of this as the delivery lead, who's the main point of contact for the client. Um, that person should be sharing major account related info back with the, so let's assume you're sitting in this seat where you're head of operations or you're the delivery lead, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the department lead, um, or you are the director of client services, client success, et cetera. Um, they're sharing major account related updates back to you. And you're also sharing the, you know, any updates that you have back with them. But then there's a specific cadence, just like most of the things that we do at Zenpilot, there's gonna be a specific cadence for what this looks like. If you're working with a client, they're on a monthly retainer, they're in a larger project, someone's spending 5K a month plus, you probably want this on a weekly basis. We talk about the nuances of you know when that doesn't make sense. And so each week, your account manager is gonna go through and they're gonna fill out a, a very clearly articulated weekly update with four magic questions. So those four magic questions are, why would the customer be unhappy? We're not asking, is the customer happy? You'll get a whole lot of, yeah, I think so, not sure. But why would the customer be unhappy forces them to think about, from the customer's perspective, oh, what, would, what could they say uh, for a reason they're actually not thrilled? Are you happy with the account, to the account manager directly? Um, I'm gonna skip over that one for now. Have there been any changes in strategy or timeline? It's super important to be aware of. Uh, often, junior account managers have no idea that a lot of things that are yellow flags or red flags are yellow flags or red flags. You know, that's, they just haven't been through the battle enough 
um, the stuff that would stick out to you or me right away, oh, this client suddenly stopped responding or they keep, you know, they pushed off the last two calls to a junior account manager in the chaos of day to day where they've got three other calls to get to. That's often seen as, man, that's awesome. I get an hour of my day back today. And on the other end, you realize, oh, like we're losing some buy in here. We're losing some progress. We're not, you know, that's, that's not going to go over well with the decision makers when we don't get this thing out on time, even though it's their fault for pushing this off. So uh, that's important to know. And then what do you need help with help on with this account? Um, this is really important to train your, your team to have a rhythm to consistently go ask for the right help. And if you want a more proactive delivery team, you've got to train them how to request help when they need it. A couple other things that they'll check off. They'll comment that that's just going to create this running timeline, client history basically of, hey, how did this go? So when we're doing a, a post-mortem at the end of a relationship, project, retainer, whatever, we've got kind of a time-stamped uh, history of what happened. This is really simple to do. This is all templated out. We use a tool called Text Expander. You just type in, uh, actually, do I even have it here? Oh, it probably won't uh, show up. Yeah, I forgot. It won't show up in, since I'm just sharing one browser window. But I can quickly, actually, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to press enter, and it posts in. You know, here's kind of the blank version, but I could go fill it in there. That part's really unimportant that you use Text Expander. It's a nice thing if you already have this in place. Um, what's super cool about getting all this info in here, though, is we're surfacing, starting to surface issues, but we're now really easily to change. We're now really easily able to change groupings and be able to see, hey, by uh, project lead, who's having success with their clients or not. You know, Jeff is crushing it. Gray's kind of uh, you know middle ground, and Andrew is very hot and cold with his accounts. How can we now go coach them? And so, in any one on ones we're doing um, or coaching, we're walking folks through where they are. Normally, I'd like to see a revenue number here too. Let's just see if we have a revenue number. We do. And I'm able to quickly see and track who's managing X amount of revenue. We probably have targets of what we want to hit. This is probably monthly spend in many cases, but uh, I've got that. I can see this. I can break this down by services. You know, how many clients do we have on any service? I want to go see that. Uh, how many accounts do we have in terms of where they are? And you could break this out a million different ways. I mentioned inactive accounts earlier, and this is really important to me, that I want to mark down why, if someone's not working with us, is that the one great reason, which is the project's completed. Hey, both sides did great. We successfully hit it. Was it maybe the worst um, uh, answer, which is poor communication? Is it that results didn't meet the expectations? Uh, budget issues, which is my least favorite because usually sometimes, especially in the time that we're going through right now there are legitimate hey we're you know shutting down our entire marketing team uh, sometimes that's legitimate often that's just a, a cover or an excuse for one of the other options keep this limited you want to be able to group by this over time you'll be able to see where are the big issues and how do we go improve that i don't know if i really spent any time on the objective but you want to have a clear hey the beginning of the relationship when we're talking in six months uh, what does the case study that we're writing together look like if we've both done a great job in this relationship well, that's usually the metric that we're going we're gonna to roll off of. All right, I could talk about a bunch of other cool things. I just wanted to do the super quick version of what this account dashboard should look like. What questions do you have? How can I take this to the next level for you?